In my video blog, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start answering questions um, that I'm being asked um, in emails and also demonstrating any new features that I've added to the app. So the first question um, comes from Germany and actually you'll notice this drawing was um, a germ German landscape designer and his question was is when he um, calculates an area, why is it never exact? And so what I've done here is I've actually created a 15 by 15 square and we'll calculate the area by selecting the lines around the perimeter um, in order and then we'll do a calculate and we'll calculate the area. And so 15 times 15 is the exact area of 225 square feet. Um, and how the algorithm works and to explain why it is that you might not get exactly 225 when you calculate this is it does not a pixel fill um, which is an algorithm that uh, Apple provides me with. And then all I do is I take that and count every pixel that's colored and multiply times the scale, and that gives me 225. So if we have a large drawing like this, then we'll, this is fairly accurate. And I actually round to two digits and we get exactly the number. Um, however, if we change the scale now, and say for example we move the scale up, so we've got a much smaller area, and what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and get rid of the text and go ahead and get rid of the color, in theory anyway. Uh, you're being a pain. Let's do it this way. All right. And we'll go ahead and move our dimensions into the correct position. But now if I calculate the area by selecting the lines around the perimeter, and I do a calculate, we'll notice that the the area calculation is not not exact anymore. Okay, but if we look at the grand scheme of things uh, and compare it to the size of the page, this is why. We've actually um, calculated a very small area, so each pixel is off by a little bit, and so it's this estimate's going to be off by a touch. And I have to do that because what I really want to be able to do is, you know, nobody's really looking for me to calculate 15 times 15. What they're really looking for is to be able to calculate areas that looks something like this, right? And we'll go ahead and close these points off so we've got an exact area. But now, how do I actually calculate this area? And again, if I go and I select the lines around the perimeter, and I'll go ahead and do a fill just to, actually what we'll do is we'll calculate the area. And now I'll do a fill, oops, to show that the area calculation is what I'm actually calculating. And I can do much more complicated areas, which is more important. And for the audience that I'm working with, which is typically um, field engineers, um, they're going to actually have waste and overages, and plus this is probably not going to exactly match these dimensions anyway, just because out in construction things don't typically end up exact measurements. So um, that pretty much explains how it works, and I think that it's accurate enough, certainly for a field drawing. The next question um, that I had um, was in regards to whether or not I'm going to put this out on um, Android. And the answer to that question is most likely not. Um, there's two really good reasons not to put it out on Android. Um, one, because the whole environment is such that most of Google software is free. Um, specialized applications like this, which don't have broad marketability, there's simply not enough revenue to support it, right? So I can't really give this away because not that many people are going to want it. Even if I read ads on there, I get like $4 for ads on 400,000 devices. So ads don't work for it. So it's just not a good market. On top of which, um, Android in general is just a cheaper version, not to kind of slam Android by any means, but really the iPad has the functionality and the clientele that are buying Apple's um, are willing to pay the extra bucks. So it just doesn't work out to where that's a pretty a very good idea for me. So the other part of this blog, what I want to demonstrate, is the new features. Okay, and so what I've changed in the application is, is when you go to select a line, when you touch on a line, it doesn't automatically select it. And I can demonstrate it in the past that as soon as I touched it, this line would now become active and it'd want to move when I drag my finger. But now because it's not active, it just draws a line. And so it's very easy to go and draw connecting lines. And this used to be a pretty big problem. And I'll demonstrate with an older version. So if I did that same process, right, what would happen is I'd touch the line and be active. And then when I moved it, it would jump off the screen. And that was um, pretty annoying. 
And I think that that really, even though there was an easy workaround, don't do that. Um, I think that it turned a lot of people off. And so by changing that, I think I'm going to change um, how the, the app appears to most consumers. Um, now, there are some limitations associated with that. So as we, and what we'll do is we'll zoom in um, to a very, you know, small area. And now if I actually touch the line, and actually I want to go on top of this, it'll snap, and this is snapping to the um, grid as designed. And I can do that to the next grid. But say, for example, I'm halfway in between the grid and I want to create a line. It starts fine, but when I get closer to this point, it's within the snap distance and it's going to close. So the workaround for that is actually pretty simple. Basically, if you wanted to do that, create your line where it's not going to snap and then move your second line closer. And now you can have a gap that's really down to a single pixel pretty easily or even a part of a pixel for that model. Um, and you would still be able to select the correct one. Say, for example, I wanted to draw from, touch over here to turn those off. I want to draw a line from um, this side. So I wanted to create this gap in there. What I could do is I could select it and draw. And because the snap is to the start point and, not, and the snap closes on the end, I can actually draw very small gaps. Um, so it's a simple workaround. It works out pretty well. And we don't have this confusing issue in terms of, uh, basically lines jumping off the screen. Area calculations, again, are dependent upon all your points being connected, all your lines being connected. So I'll turn the grids on. And now what we'll notice is, is that we don't have lines um, between these points. So we would have to, if we wanted to create this area here, so say for example, we close this off and we'll close it off the way you might want to think about doing it in a drawing. Um, let's see, we'll just go grab this, line it up over here, draw across, right? And then to move these points, go into points mode and just drag it and we'll have the snap features, it'll line it up. But we haven't broken these lines. So if I want this area here, I can't select the lines around the perimeter because they're not connected. What I would have to do is actually delete this line and recreate it correctly. Similarly down here. And you're going to be pain. Ah. And again, it doesn't matter what order these are in, so much as that they are connected to the points. And now I can select the lines around the perimeter and calculate my area. And then to verify that I did that correctly, go ahead and fill it just so I can see it. And that's pretty much what I want to present. It's a short video blog. Um, any questions that are sent to me, I'm going to try and answer in video. Um, I think it's a lot easier. Um, and uh, we'll take it from here. Thank you very much.